The church has a set of professional actors who become something completely different as soon as they have an audience. And this isn't just my opinion or observation, but it's biblical. 2 Timothy 3, verse 5 to 6, describes these individuals as having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. In other words, there are those in the church who act. They pretend to have respect for God, but they don't. They pretend to have a love for Christ, but they really don't. They act like they are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they're not. You'll never hear them preach the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. You'll never hear them preach the gospel of repentance and holiness. No, they won't preach scripture. Instead, they will rely on theology. They will rely on philosophy. They rely on academics and all sorts of things, but they will never speak from a place that is rooted in the word of God. They know the church lingo. They know how to sound good. They have the appearance of godliness, as the Bible says, but they are quite simply pretending. They are acting. In reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. They want nothing to do with a life that is governed by God's word. These kinds of people want nothing to do with a sacrificial life, a life of service to the kingdom of the Lord. The Bible says, stay away from people like these. They are the ones who worm their way into the church pews and backbenches, all so that they can neutralize the burning believer. Be careful of such people. Even though they may look or act like godly people, they're not. And here's one of the biggest clues to help you identify such people. First and foremost, you yourself need the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that he can help you in your spirit to discern such people. The topic of the last days or the end times is always intriguing and it's amazing that there is a division even in and amongst the church about whether or not we are even in the 11th hour. However, I would like to draw your attention to 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3 to 4. In the Amplified Translation, the Bible says, First of all, know without any doubt that mockers will come in the last days with their mocking, following after their own human desires and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? What has become of it? For ever since the fathers fell asleep in death, all things have continued exactly as they did from the beginning of creation. Now if I may ask you a question, how many mockers do we have in this present day? People who do what they want to do out of arrogance and pride. People who think they are intelligent and in fact they stand to try and reason against the Bible. Because as we've just read, a mocker will question the coming of the Lord. They will question the promise of Christ's return. They will question the promise of Jesus Christ returning for the church. A mocker will question the validity of God's word and say, Our ancestors are dead and buried yet everything is still the same as it was since the beginning of time until now. Yes, we all know about the obvious signs of the last days. We know that men will be lovers of self. We know that dangerous times will come and there will be famines and pestilence and rumors of war. But did you know that mockers are a sign that we are in the last days. People who question the coming of the Lord are a sign 
that we are close, that we are near. One of the biggest signs that someone has a form of godliness but no real love or relationship with God is that these types of people tend to never want to inconvenience themselves for the sake of the gospel. They never want to humble themselves. They come alive when they are given a position, when they are given an audience or a platform, but you'll never find them serving if no one is looking. You'll never find them helping if there's no one to give them a compliment. These kinds of people do things so that they may shine in the limelight. It's strategic. It's conniving and calculated. Their Christianity is one that is on full display only when people are watching. But may I remind you that the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24, whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul, that is, put in your very best effort as something done for the Lord and not for men, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that you will receive the inheritance which is your greatest reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. So here's what I'd like to tell you. Don't be an actor. Don't be a pretender. And I need you to understand this because a different translation of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3 to 4 says, Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, Everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. A scoffer and a person who mocks are one in the same thing. But the point is this, one of the clear signs that we are in the last days is that people will come. They will write articles in newspapers, they will write their comments they will stand and speak to crowds and they will question where is this coming of Jesus Christ that was promised. They will question where is Jesus Christ since you Christians keep saying he is coming. So what should you and I do when we see these things? When a scoffer mocks you and voices his or her disagreement, when they ridicule you, what should you do? Because believe me, they will put up an argument that tries to persuade you to see things from their perspective. However, Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night.